How do we learn this practice of humility? Christ's crucifixion on Good Friday was preceded by Jesus on his knees portraying his humility before the disciples at the Last Supper on Thursday. So Good Friday was preceded by Humble Thursday, the communion celebration that night before. And each time we come as Christ's church to communion, we can remember that Jesus used that first Lord's Supper not just as a meal, but as a tool in the lives of his disciples. It was so intentional. Communion was launched by Jesus humbly kneeling, Jesus humbly washing the feet of his proud disciples. And in doing so, Jesus did what Paul so well described. He took the form of a servant, like we just read in Philippians 2. We are invited as believers who love and follow Christ to do the same. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, at the first Lord's Supper, we find a clue about why Jesus had to humbly come and do that cleansing. And it's a very vivid reminder. The original supper on that night, Jesus had to model an attitude that we have to choose every time we come to his table. Do you remember the problem that was going on? Do, do you know the problem those disciples faced? It's the problem we all face every day. They were thinking first of themselves. They were thinking completely of a self-centered, focused world and were disputing coming into that Last Supper. On the evening of the Last Supper, there was a problem among the disciples and Jesus had to address it. While Satan was waiting at the door to enter Judas's heart, while the high priests were plotting for Christ's life, while the Roman cross was laid down waiting not far away, a greater priority than all the others was on Christ's heart. His disciples had to be cleansed, and they could only be cleansed by his sacrificial, humble love. He had to confront their sinfulness in humble servant-like position on his knees in front of every one of them. What, a, what an amazing event. Often our lives have the same problem that Jesus saw among his disciples. Jesus knew there was a competitive spirit in the hearts of his disciples. In fact, approaching the Last Supper, the disciples were disputing who was greatest. In fact, Look what Luke tells us. This is Luke telling us as he looked back on the Lord's Supper, as he is writing down an, an, an spirit-inspired biographical sketch of that last night of Christ's life before the cross. Look what he writes. The heart of the disciples contained unforsaken selfishness, disagreements, contentions, they had allowed their jealousies and impatience and ambition to pollute the hallowed atmosphere of worship. And Jesus didn't want that pollution. He didn't want them to ruin that sacred moment. So he had to, to model the attitude we're all to embrace. And he did it in person at their feet that night. Look what Luke said. He said, now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Wouldn't that be a neat dispute to have? Can you imagine doing that? We don't really publicly do that anymore. We do it online and, and try and portray greatness, but, but usually most people don't argue over who's greater, but the disciples were so caught up in the moment that walking into the Last Supper, they were arguing I'm greater. No, I'm greater. No, I'm greater than all of you. And that contention is what entered the room. So what they get is an unforgettable lesson in humility.